Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, we got about four topics here, actually five, and they had to do with some Russian attack submarines who struck one another, well, in a certain way, in the Maria Nosti in the Baltic Sea. That's one. The other one, the Russian submarine attack submarines had a secret operation, a mission, by uh, Ireland in the Irish Sea. Another one, Mr. Zelensky Stein is not happy with his commander-in-chief, which is, or chief of staff, uh, military chief of staff, who is the Russian Sirsky, the general Sirsky, who replaced Zaluzny. Why? Because, I don't know, maybe he, because he's Ukrainian, I have no idea. But it's good to always rotate your guys if you're afraid that you will be toppled. So that those are a few of the topics I will discuss today. I will give you an uh, update on the 11 fronts the Russians are attacking. 11 fronts. And the last topic is related to, to who is pulling the strings and is not the elected officials but the bureaucrats. In this case the Pentagon and NATO. They want to make sure that the elected official, which is going to be the President of the United States of America, supposedly with power, cannot touch the aid the military industrial complex will give to Ukraine in the name of the citizens who elected the President. So that tells you who's who, what's what. So let's start with the first article. This is from the Telegraph and it is, this is the title. Russian attack submarines carried out secret operations in Irish Sea. I wonder what they did over there. Maybe they did a mock attack on someone, uh, on the French. <laughs> Russian submarines twice conducted unprecedented missions in the Irish Sea. After Putin's illegal invasion of Ukraine, it has emerged. Question for the fuckers in Telegraph. Was NATO bombardment of Yugoslavia in 1999 legal? No. They didn't have the approval of the United Nations Security Council. That makes it illegal. Unless NATO was attacked. And when you're attacked, then you don't run and say you have the right of self-defense and you know react. You don't have to go to the United Nations Security Council and say, hey, I've been attacked. Please give me le legitimacy, legality of hitting back. You hit back by self-defense. NATO was not attacked by Yugoslavia in 1999. That is an illegal war. And the perpetrators, the guys who bombarded Yugoslavia for what, 76 days, are were criminals? Or no? If Putin is, then those guys <coughs> qualify. All right, now let's move on. UK forces moved to protect British and Irish waters after the two deployments of the Kilo class attack subs. One was about 18 months ago, while the other was more recent. The extent of the Russian submarine movements went beyond what UK officials have previously seen. Bloomberg reported citing three sources familiar with the matter. Gigi, Mikey and Tommy. Those are my sources. Our Due to the confidentiality issues, I cannot even tell you the first name. But hey, they are uh, familiar with the issue. Uh, I'm sick of these kind of things. Do I think that the Russians did that? Yes, and much more than these guys will not tell us, so the baboons are not uh, taken away from their busy schedule of eating each other's fleas. Okay, make sure they stay busy with that one, on, on task. Next one, Business Insider. This is from 17 hours ago. Russian submarines fought a torpedo duel in waters surrounded by NATO allies. Do you remember Maria Nosti? Maria Nosti is what the Romans called the Mediterranean Sea at one point. Hey, but Roman Empire was Roman Empire. What these guys offer us, uh, that's not uh, equivalent. So here it is, uh, Maria Nosti is when they try to, for instance, in this case, is the Baltic Sea, where they have surrounded by all those, you know, so if you want uh, Finland, you got Sweden now, you got Denmark, you got the uh, Baltic Seas, and you got Poland, and all those guys, but a little bit of Russia that must go, ho, 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 right? Um, 
NATO tries to, to change Black Sea or turn it into a Mastra Maria Nosti, which is our sea. Where, you know, I like when people try to, I think they just smear the value of other empires, other civilizations, when they try to copy. Like, for instance, Pax Americana you know, models the Pax Romana. Pax Romana was held in place not by uh, cultural uh, enhancement and you know diversity and all. It was with the sword, spear, and others. So let's see what's going on here. The two Russian submarines engaged in a torpedo duel during the Baltic Sea training exercise last week. The crews of the Novorossiysk and Dimitrov also trained to attack enemies and evade enemy attacks. The Baltic Sea has been described as a quote-unquote NATO lake. What is NATO? Since Sweden and Finland joined the alliance. So when maybe Georgia will uh, and Russia will cease to exist as is right now and Ukraine will be in place and be part of NATO, then the Black Sea will be Marianosti, which is our sea, our lake in this NATO lake. The exercise took place in the Baltic Sea waters, sometimes referred as a NATO lake, due to, to its waters being surrounded by NATO allies in Sweden. Blah, blah, blah. The Kilo class diesel electric submarines, the ones that I mentioned, had a training duel involving torpedo fire, according to Russian state run media TASS. The media outlet reported the training exercise on June 25th, citing a Russian Navy. The Russian Navy. In the Baltic Sea, Following the com completion of anti-submarine warfare maneuvers, the submarine Novorossiysk engaged the Dimitrov with a training torpedo without a warhead, but it was a torpedo launched, uh, said TASS. The submarine crews also conducted several other exercises focused on detecting and tracking adversary submarines, evasion and combat training. Hmm, okay, don't worry, they will just, just flexing muscles for nothing. The subs Novorossiysk and Dimitrov are representative of two of several variants of Russian Kilo-class submarines. The Novorossiysk, for instance, is a Project 636.3 sub and can launch Calibre cruise missiles. 636.3s are the most current Kilo-class subs being built, the most modern. So yeah, London, they don't have to strike London, they don't have to strike uh, Berlin or Paris, uh, or I don't know, the, you go to... Uh, Netherlands, let's put Netherlands. You just have to create a big wave for the Great Britain and for the Netherlands, and they're gone. They don't have to strike inside. Why? Low level um, uh, to topography. Uh, wherever the Thames, uh, London. Then Dimitrov, pa pa pa, pi pi pi, pu pu pu. So let's move to the next one Newsweek. Why Russian submarines torpedoed each other in NATO Lake? You want to make sure that you've got that in your head. That's a NATO lake, and we should all celebrate, um, how do you call it, community uh, celebration. Two uh, Russian submarines faced off against each other in a simulated attack in the Baltic Sea. Simulated? Where NATO conducted its own military drills at a time of heightened tensions between the Alliance and Moscow. So the same thing is, guys, is combat maneuvers, detecting, tracking, and launching torpedoes against enemy submarines. The same article here, it tells the same thing. It says that Russia appears to be relying more on its submarine fleet to convey power. Yeah, they have a few um, nuclear submarines around the U.S. coast, and they don't even have to send any bombers and any, uh, I don't know, Tsar bombs towards us because of the idiots in charge of us. All right. So... It says here that um, Russia appears to be relying more on that. It recently deployed a flotilla that included its nuclear-powered submarine Kazan to Cuba and more to come. They don't have to build uh, launching pads or anything, no, 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 no. Where it conducted military drills in Caribbean in international waters close to the U.S. coast. The Kazan was armed with Zircon hypersonic missile with nuclear warheads. Uh, it, it can has, and in response, NATO deployed a P-8 Poseidon uh, anti-submarine aircraft to monitor its maneuvers. But hey, the Russians are the imperialist ones, uh, especially in Cuba, where the Americans have a military base. Guantanamo, right? All right, hypocrisy at, uh, as always. Now, new voice of Ukraine. That's the new 
topic, which is Zelensky, quote-unquote, not thrilled with Sirsky, as C-I-C, Commander-in-Chief. So he's not thrilled. He doesn't have night orgasms uh, with Sirsky. Uh, give me one more time, Sirsky. Hit me. <laughs> and Sirsky is like, что? Anyway, or кто? Which one is it? Что? I think it's Russian, and кто is Ukrainian. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, and here are the two baby dolls, the thriller and the thrilled one. <laughs> yeah, 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 man, these guys. Sirsky is Russian, just so you know, and uh, Zelensky is Ukrainian. Ukrainian president, Vol Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky is not, quote-unquote, particularly thrilled with General Oleksandr Sirsky as commander-in-chief of the armed forces, a source within the administration told New Voice on Ukraine, of Ukraine on July 1st. The president is reportedly dissatisfied with how the military prepared for and responded to the Russian incursion in northern Kharkiv Oblast in mid-May. He, um, Zelensky Stein, dismissed another general, calling him that, say that he killed more Ukrainians than any uh, Russian general. But how are you supposed to, I mean, he could have, uh, the, that general could have prevented the soldiers from dying by retreating and maybe not being war over there, Zelensky Stein, you know what I mean? Everything goes, you know, is diverting responsibility, avoiding, when actually it's you, it's you, Zelensky Stein, who actually, you ran on a platform uh, to stop and make peace and deal with the Russians. And you said, I don't even recognize the Minsk II agreement, which is international law. They were talking about uh, illegality. Minsk II was uh, its international law at this point, which said, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. And Zelensky said, I don't like anything in that Minsk II agreement. Well, too bad. So what do you do? Continue with, in Donbass. And the Russians said, Stoy, that's it. We're going to come in this time. For real. But hey, the Russians invaded illegally. But the 2014 coup was legal? No. All right. Ukrainian MP Mariana Bezul Bezuchla, who entered parliament in 2019 as a member of Zelensky's servant. I don't want to be a servant. I want to be the ruler. You want to be a servant? Be my servant. I want to be the ruler. The servant of the people party. Such a weasel, weasel, weasel bazaar, if you know what I mean mentality. I'm going to do this uh, 1,000 times. Remember, and if you don't remember, please read, or you can go on YouTube and you have it very nicely explained, the Master Morality, that's Friedrich Nietzsche's, Master Morality versus Slave Morality. Go and read that. That's exactly the servant of the people, and you implemented martial law, but you serve the people. Such a... Um, uh, Euphemist, euphemisms, has been publicly criticizing Sirsky in recent months. Well, he's gonna go. Sirsky is gonna go. Next one. Ukrainska Pravda. This is from Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024. Russians attack on 11 fronts with almost 200 combat clashes in a day. Ukraine's general staff. 11 fronts. And they attack. The Russians' forces have attacked on 11 fronts over the past day with the most intense number of battles on the Pokrovsk, Pokrovsk front, a total of 189 combat clashes. Stop the garbage, stop the war. But hey, some interests make a lot of profits and they own someone that we... Anyway, you know that. And uh, we have here a little summary on Kharkiv. Kupiansk, Liman, Siversk Front, Krematorsk Front, Toretsk Front, Pekrovsk, Pokrovsk Front, Kurohove Front, Vremivka Front, Orikhiv Front, Pridniprovske Front, Volin and Polisia Fronts. These are the fronts these guys are talking about. And now we get to where bureaucracy uh, bypasses and rules and the elected officials are just figureheads helps to be elected by money and interest. Ukrainska Pravda. NATO seeks ways to protect military aid to Ukraine from Trump, Wall Street Journal. Can you imagine that? Right there. 
So, uh, from what I remember, you have like this. You have uh, the people, the people vote for a president. The president then picks his government, which is the heads of uh, different departments, and like defense department, right? Defense, that is uh, right, military. And then uh, these guys are putting together a um, budget. So, Trump or the president put together with his ministers, with his uh, advisors, put together a, uh, uh, as I said, a uh, uh, budget, send the budget to the Congress, and the Congress approves or do don't, and they will always approve the Pentagon's budget. Always. Why? They have the guns. Clear and nice and simple. Don't... Uh, on the other hand, remember, Trump, or the president, let's put it that way, he appoints all right. He nominates the um, secretaries of departments. They go for a little hearings and the Congress says yay or nay, depending on who the people are. If there's part of them, they will say yay. So these are the bureaucrats. And then Trump can say, do this. And the bureaucrat says, yes, sir, we're going to do it. <laughs> this guy. Anyway, so we have here NATO six ways to protect military aid to Ukraine from Trump. NATO is U.S.'s organization. So if the president of the United States is really in charge, he's in charge of the military, he's in charge of NATO. Remember when Trump met Stoltenberg in Brussels and the little, whatever that was, a little lunch, breakfast? He, go and watch that one. Trump took Stoltenberg to task as he should. He's just the Secretary General Stoltenberg. If, if Trump wanted, Stoltenberg was gone yesterday. It was like a... Uh, um, um, teacher speaking with a student. That's how it was. Uh, so if Trump, if the President of the United States of America wants, he can do whatever. But no, NATO, somehow, they want to make sure, they want to make sure that the U.S. President cannot do squat. But hey, he's the one who gives you the funding. His government, that he was the only one elected here. What do you mean you protect? Protect what? The aid? This shows you the interests behind the Ukraine war. So when they tell you the Russians invaded and this, the Russians are this and that, okay, well, uh, nom, 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 nom. okay, and then you get the rest, who are the profiteers. Very clear, this is the democracy that we are taught to love. All right, NATO is preparing a series of measures aimed, who's NATO? United States is NATO. What are you talking about? at maintaining and strengthening its long-term support for Ukraine amid growing support on the European right wing for former President Donald Trump's election victory, including plans to send a senior civilian official to Kiev and establish a new command in Germany to coordinate military assistance and training for Ukrainian troops. All that should help if the President of the United States of America says stop. But hey, how much power he has? You see right here. It says here, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is also establishing a new command in Wiesbaden, Germany, to coordinate the provision of military equipment to Kiev and training for U Ukrainian troops. All right. When I say NATO, U.S., uh, because you know what? Romania is a NATO. Do you think that Romania can do squat? No, they're just followers. They're baboons over there. They're just, you know, vassal state. as everybody else over there. Everybody else. U.S.'s military dwarfs the rest. The rest together of NATO cannot withstand the United States of America. So, it's like the elephant with a little um, mice around him, around him walking on a little wooden bridge. And then the mice say, hey elephant, we are uh, making so much noise. Dum, 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 dum. When actually it's just the elephant making the noise because the, the little rats or the mice are just all right, but hey, we are together, we are NATO. No, US is NATO. All right, my friends, here it is. Tells you who's who, what's what. The same happened with Trump in the first time. Trump was the president, but when he barked orders, he is, he is supposedly secretary of this department, that department, or defense department says, yes, sir. Hey, I want you to investigate, look into that little thing with uh, uh, Biden. Yes, sir, nobody did squat, why? Because you, Trump, are going to fire me, you're going to hire another baboon like me, part of the same club, and when you get out, the guy that you fired is going to get a better job. And this is the democracy uh, that we're supposed, and freedom that we're supposed to defend with our children or our own blood. Thanks, but no thanks. Thank you very much for being with me again today.
stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.